In this video we are going to take a look in the data types in R. Uh, it will be a little bit boring and slow because I will also uh, briefly explain how this, how this works inside of R. Uh, but believe me, it's very essential uh, knowledge so you don't uh, spend hours with unexpected behaviors without knowing what to do. So this is a list with the basic types in R. Uh, there is m there is others, but this is the ones I believe are more important. So numeric is just numbers. Character is names. Uh, characters are surrounded by quotes, which denotes that they are actually characters. Uh, logical store just true or false uh, values. They are very cheap because they only spend one byte. Uh, Factors, they are used for classification. Uh, let's say uh, you have a, a list of fruits like bananas, apples, and so on, and they are characters. And when you convert them to factors, there will be, R will actually attribute a number to each of these um, strings, each of these uh, characters. Uh, by the way, characters are, characters are also called strings. And it will assume a value for each of these strings, for one, like number one for apples, number two for bananas. And it w what will be stored is just the number, so it's much cheaper computationally to deal with um, a list of numbers than a list of characters. But you can always retrieve the real value, the real character value for them with comments. Uh, there is time and date variables, there will be a whole chapter, a whole uh, lecture about time and date, there will be a whole lecture about characters also, and there will be future lecture lectures about matrices and arrays. And then it comes lists and data frames. This, uh, the difference between lists and data frames, let me show you in R. Let me show you. So if I create a list of with the number one and the character apple, all of the sudden the number one gets quotes. So it's not a number anymore. It's actually a string, and it, it gets you can't make calculations with a string. You can, but you have to convert them. So what happened there? is the fact that arrays can't store different types of variables in the same array but with lists you can this one and so you can see that the number one is a number one is not a character one and apple is still a character but it's important to note that all this easiness of dealing with it that it doesn't uh, need to be in the same type comes with a cost and this applies also to data frames which can contain any kind of other uh, types inside of it in fact you can have data frames inside of data frames and so on and but th this can be expensive you need to be careful when using it because uh, R has to make additional checks to ensure that this this will be stored correctly in the memory. So I my recommendation is if, if you only have numbers, use arrays and matrices. Uh, data frames is when you have more complex kinds of uh, data structures. For instance, you're using a function that, re, uh, that gives you back a really complex data composed by many features and so on. So then you can use a data frame fine. But when using uh, strong calculations, I would recommend you to use arrays and matrices directly. This uh, helps you to not have unexpected behaviors. And other data types in R has have the command S and is. For instance, I would like to have S numeric the character one it retrieves one. So S forces the conversion of one type to another. It can be, uh, sometimes it's not that simple. You can't just convert a data frame into a matrix. But 
that's the idea. Sometimes you will need to convert it by hand or with other procedures. You can do, for instance, as character a number. So I have the number one. I want I want a character one. Um, it's possible also to use the is, which will check is numeric the one yes, and is numeric the character one no, and these true or false uh, are from the type logical. If I start that in a variable, a is equal to that. A it's a logical variable, and the how to how to know which kind of, of variable I it is. It's the command, we use the command class. Class A, the logical. Class number one, it's numeric. Class um, character A, is a character. Uh, when I when I input a number in R, it is by default numeric. Numeric is double precision. And I, I don't have time really to here to explain exactly what it means to be double precision, but means it's really precise. And in some languages, like for instance C and Fortran, you are requested to, to tell which kind of variable you want, like single precision, double precision, or integer. This tells you how fraction numbers will be, how precise they will be. And and it, it's important to note that uh, the core functions of R are written in C and Fortran. So R is an interpreted language and uh, it creates a, a structure in the memory and then who actually runs the most of the calculations is C and Fortran. And so that's how R is such a fast language even though it's interpreted because the, um, these calculations are run by really fast. Actually, computers can't fully represent most of the fraction uh, real numbers. Uh, this is caused by the way numbers are stored in the computers, which are parts of a whole. So the number 0 0.5 can be fully represented because it's a half of a whole. And 0 0.25 can be fully represented because it's a fourth of a whole, and so on. Uh, so. Uh, computers are still very precise but when the numbers are really between uh, one of these fractions it they lose some precision so this might not seem like a big deal but if you keep uh, with long calculations that use the result of each other like with the biological simulations this can become uh, a big problem there is an interesting article in the Wikipedia called uh, about floating point. This is the name of the representation that computers use for real numbers, and it's really interesting. You should take a, a look on it, and it, ex it, it explains where, from what this uncertainty arises. So let's take an, a look in an example of this uh, precision problem. Let's assign to A a really big value and assign to B a really small value. Now let's assign to C A minus B. If I ask C minus A should give me the value of B, right? But it gives me zero. If I ask if C minus A is equal to zero, it tells me that it's true when it shouldn't because it should be equal to b if i ask if c minus a is equal to b it tells false but actually it should be true so there was some loss in precision in these numbers here a way to try to to see if there is a r make some rounding when showing the numbers so you can for instance used print and increase the number of default digits to be shown. Sometimes you see uh, uh, that there is actually numbers after 
that are just rounded these numbers but not in this case in this case you can clearly see that really there is nothing else really R thinks that this number is zero when it's not so there was a loss of precision there uh, another important comment is round round is the rounding comment so if I ask to round the 0 0.55555 and the second parameter that I pass, the second argument is the how many uh, numbers after the dot that I'm going to, to round. So if I ask for 2 which is the currency it will it rounds it. And another thing that in R is the reason why it's in R is just for compatibility issue, especially with the language that wa in which R is based, which is the S language, is that a lot of programs that you see in R actually instead of using the equal for assignment of value, use this symbol. And it works anyway in R because for this compat compatibility issue. I prefer to use equal because it's the default for all the other languages. Uh, equal was implemented in R because of that, because it's, it's the default. And so, and there is nearly no difference between one and another. Like, there is some difference in syntax. For instance, uh, just to give an example, if I define a function, I use equal to assign uh, default values for parameters, and this works. But if I use this uh, assignment symbol instead of equal, it will not work because I can't assign a value here. So I would recommend to just use equal all the time. And uh, in the next video, we are going to take uh, a look in other comments to understand our the variables that we are using and the types of them. See you there.